Welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. We are officially on episode number 30. Crazy. Yes. Right? We celebrated with number 10. I don't even know yeah. how we could top that. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We did it. We just We've kept got going. Triple the triple the party right now <laughs> <laughs> compared to number ten. All right, so we thought uh, for episode thirty, we've got a three theme. We've got three poems by the same author, but we're going to break them into three different episodes. There are three of us. Uh, Mike and Chris mm -hmm. have not read the two po the three poems, uh, and we are going to be looking at a poem called "The Gift" by Lee Young Lee. So here we go. To pull the metal splinter from my palm, my father recited a story in a low voice. I watched his lovely face and not the blade. Before the story ended, he'd removed the iron sliver I thought I'd die from. I can't remember the tale, but hear his voice still, a well of dark water, a prayer. And I recall his hands, two measures of tenderness he laid against my face, the flames of discipline he raised above my head. Had you entered that afternoon, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm, a silver tear, a tiny flame. Had you followed that boy, you would have arrived here where I bend over my wife's right hand. Look how I shave her thumbnail down so carefully she feels no pain. Watch as I lift the splinter out. I was seven when my father took my hand like this, and I did not hold that shard between my fingers and think, metal that will bury me. Christen it, little assassin, or going deep for my heart. And I did not lift up my wound and cry, death visited here. I did what a child does when he's given something to keep. I kissed my father. All, All right. right. Okay. <laughs> so there's a lot in there. Yeah. Whoa. And having read it for the first time, um, this was uh, written by, like I said, Lee Young Lee, who was born in 1957. He was born in Jakarta, Indonesia. Hmm. And by the time he was eight, he ended up in America. And I believe he is now currently in Chicago. Oh. Okay. So... Um, if you'd like me to kind of talk a little bit. Yeah, while why don't you, you take kind of, this one first while we're taking okay. it all in. So the reason um, I picked it, we can actually go through a lot of poetry looking for poems for Trojan poetry, trying to find ones that would be appropriate in length and content and all of that. And I got really excited when I uh, found this one in this book. It is the <laughs> there you go, Norton Anthology of Modern and Contemporary Poetry, Volume 2. And I was thumbing through it and I found this one and uh, the the other two we're going to read in the next two episodes. And uh, instantly the simplicity, but the elegance of it, uh, the, the father and son theme, right, spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And then I got, you know, I feel like I got it in the first three stanzas, but then in the middle of the fourth stanza, I kind of lost the sense of it. Mm -hmm. And like we've talked about before, I like it when you get it and you're hooked and then something throws you for a loop. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes like a puzzle to figure it out. Um, so I actually do have some ideas. I've thought about it, read it now four or five times, and I think I've come to um, some conclusions about it. But I guess I'm curious um, what you guys think, if you have anything to, you okay. want to share. Okay, Chris, you take it first. Yeah, think? I, I think it's a cool poem. Um, the, the early imagery bothered me. Um, that The thought of a, just a metal splinter getting pulled out of a palm. I'm like, yeah. ooh, and that's yeah. like the first line, like, where <laughs> right. is this going to go from here? Yeah. Um, but then it, it, it's, it's this nice juxtaposition, though, of this lovely face um, and that, that child, you know, father-son uh, sort of, you know, mm -hmm. peace going through it all. Um, I'm, I'm similar to you, John, as I, as I was working through it. I, I, the first three stanzas seem to make sense uh, and work, um, or at least up until the very end of... Um, that third stanza, mm -hmm. and then when, when the wife comes into play, right? right? Mm -hmm. And what's the connection there? Um, I, you'd almost expected it to be his son right. was going to be if there was going to be a third character, right? right. And so mm -hmm. that that kind of had me a little confused. And then I, I really liked the um, uh, subtle uh, but nice uh, religious piece there with the he has the prayer mm -hmm. um, up at the beginning, and then you know talking about christening it uh, at the end. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was a nice little little touch that came through. And I think <clears throat> one of the things that I, I really like, and I would want to you know, spend some more time trying to figure out is what he says at the towards the very end. Death visited here. Mm. Uh, the note I made as I was reading that or saw that being read was, um, but it didn't stay. Right? Mm, right. That, that death is just temporary, or maybe. Where well, he says he did death. not. 
it did not lift up my wound and cry that. Oh, that's what he okay. Well, back yeah. when he was and seven, And that's the though. weird thing at the end where it becomes negatives. Back to right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I didn't miss although that. Although he yeah. wanted to, or he's thinking about it now. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I noticed, Chris, like you said, the second stanza where it describes his voice. I just noticed the imagery throughout it first, mm -hmm. and now I'm trying to piece it together as you guys talk about it. What does this all mean, right? So the second stanza, his voice, the father's voice, was still a well of dark water, a prayer. So why dark water? It seems mm -hmm. kind of menacing to me. And then his hands, two measures of tenderness, he laid against my face. Flames of discipline mm -hmm. he raised above, above my head. So what were the flames of discipline? Was he yelling at the kid for doing something wrong? Right. Was he beating him? I mean, what's going on there? And then the other thing, uh, in the third stanza, you, you, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm, a silver tear, a tiny flame. And so it's like that moment the father, it's almost like magic. That's when, when you said you read the first line, I thought it was, I didn't realize it was literal. To pull the metal yeah. splinter from my palm, my father recited a story. I thought this was like magical realism. Mm. Like, oh cool, the father's like casting a spell right. or something like that. No. And then I was like, yeah. no, he's just digging a splinter out <laughs> of his hand with a knife. Yeah, well that's the other thing like, that caught me too. I don't know, I mean, uh, it's been a long time since I've had a splinter and I'm not sure if I've had a metal one, but I've never used a knife to dig it out, mm. like a needle to just kind of get a little bit into the skin. But I'm thinking when I saw a blade, I was like, I just wrote next to it, I'm like, why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, my goodness. There's other tools out there right. that you could use. Um, and it, so John, do you want, you said you had some ideas about that ending because- I, I do. Okay. All but right. I don't know if you guys want me to- I'd love to please, hear. Please, okay. enlighten us. I'm what not gonna get we, there in the yeah. next three minutes. <laughs> right, so. so what do you got? <laughs> right, so I, um, I got to the end of it right now. I was confused about the whole, what the not, right? I did not do this. I did not do this. Right. I did not do this. And the mm -hmm. question that I came up with also was, what is the gift? Right? It's mm -hmm. called the gift. Oh, true. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, it, what mm -hmm. exactly is the gift and why is the wife in it? Right? Because it seems to be about the father and the son, yep. but then it becomes about the husband and the wife, but then it goes back to the father. And I guess what I, maybe I'll just give it away and then I'll explain yeah. how I got there is I think the gift is this idea of tenderness okay and mm -hmm. that that the gentle the gentleness and the helpfulness that the boy learns you can be gentle and helpful even though his father at times had hands that were flames mm -hmm. of discipline mm -hmm. they could also be measures of tenderness right the father mm -hmm. is clearly an ambiguous figure right mm -hmm. and the the son is remembering okay my dad did this and i thought i was going to die mm -hmm. in stanza one but then in stanza four he says i did not Cry say that. this is yeah. metal that will bury me i did not call it a little assassin right mm -hmm. so the boy learned mm -hmm. through this act of gentleness you can save somebody right both maybe figuratively mm -hmm. and literally mm -hmm. um and then he's rem as he's helping his wife get out of splinter he's taken back to the memory of his father sure and that um that is the gift right he learns that gentleness is possible yeah and it, it prevents that anxiety, like you said at the end. I didn't think all these right. things, metal will bury me and death. I, I also thought something about death visited here, like you pointed out, Chris. Maybe he's thinking about his father, like this random act yeah. that took him back in time to remember when his dad did this for him. And he's like thinking right. about it, you know, right. death visited here. Maybe his dad passed away recently when he wrote this poem or he was on mm -hmm. his mind or something like that. Um, or going deep for my heart. I don't know. Maybe that's also like mourning or something like that. Yeah. Something to consider. And I just, the, cause at the end, right. I did what a child does when he's given something to keep. I kissed line. my father, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the son's nervousness or anxiety is completely washed away mm -hmm. because of the father, right. His tender face, his lovely face, right. Even though it's a blade, right. which right. seems scary, yeah. the father is so gentle with it or tender that he's able to alleviate. Well, and yeah. that, that in the second line of that last stanza, uh, he describes the way he's helping her, mm -hmm. you know, so carefully, right? Mm -hmm. That same, that there, there's, there is that tenderness there right. that, um, mm -hmm. that could have been learned. So yeah, it's good, it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't know, the, I guess the question would be, do you think that that is the gift? And right. if not, what is the gift? Because, you know, he sets us up that there's a gift, but then never says, Mm -hmm. what it is. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN. Also, check out our website at trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com.